storytellers. Many years ago, I volunteered to sing songs and play my guitar for little children during story times at the public library in Ann Arbor. I had a lot of fun with the, <clears throat> with the kids, but the main attraction was the librarian who told the stories. I worked with a few different librarians, and each had their own style. My favorite was Laura. She never read stories from a book. She told stories from her memory. And she didn't just tell the stories. She used all kinds of props and silly voices and musical instruments to tell the story. She liked to tell a story about a dancer. And in between parts of the story, she would have the children sing a, a simple chorus with her. And that's when she would bring out her limberjack. A limberjack is a wooden puppet that uh, has articulated arms and legs, and a stick is in the back of it so that you can hold it like this, and the arms and legs kind of go crazy. So um, she would hold it over this wooden piece um, that would go up and down, and when she would uh, put the puppet over it, the puppet would dance, dance, dance. So Laura would then tell the children to stand up and dance and sing with her, and, and they would just go crazy, as you can imagine kids would. And I've seen her tell this story many times, and I, it always makes me smile. I was so impressed by how Laura told these stories that I wanted to know how she had come to be this storyteller and how she was able to keep all that going at one time, the singing and the telling the story and the playing the limberjack and um, making silly voices. So she told me that um, she had grown up in a family of storytellers, that they weren't professional storytellers like she was, but when they got around the dining room table, all the family would gather and her grandmother and aunts and uncles would tell stories about the old country, about the new country, and about their funny neighbors. So very early on, as children do, Laura listened very carefully to her grandmother, especially and she began imitating her in telling stories. And she practiced remembering them. So soon she not only listened to the stories at the dining room table, but she was telling stories too. In the Hebrew scripture passage today from Deuteronomy, we learn that God wanted to hear a story too. Not just any story. God wanted the Hebrews to tell him about the Exodus story, the story of God with them, providing for them, hearing their cries, bringing them out of slavery, and sending them into a promised land. In this particular passage, Moses told the people what God wanted them to be done once they arrived in the promised land. After the chosen people had settled down in their new homeland, built their houses, and started growing their food, they were to bring their first harvest to the holy place and give them to the priest there. After the priest received the basket of food, God wanted them to tell this story. The story begins like this. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. Here God's people had begun their journey with God when they were homeless, nomadic people, led by a childless couple, Abram and Sarai. The next verse, he went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. Abraham and Sarah went from being homeless shepherds walking through the desert to being immigrants in a new nation in a large city. And they made their homes there even though they felt like outsiders at first. Next, when the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, here the Egyptian pharaohs, of course, enslaved the Hebrew people to make them make, build their uh, cities for them. And over four centuries of violence and cruelty to the Hebrews, they were 
stuck in slavery. And the next verse is, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction. The Hebrew people told God about their suffering. As you can see in the lament psalms of um, the Old Testament, people cry out to God with their feelings. Their prayers were moans, pleading with God to save them from this nightmare of slavery. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with signs and wonders. Then through Moses, God saved them from their exhaustion, their starvation and oppression. God freed the people from slavery. And finally, and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So God was faithful to God's people by leading them out of slavery and into a land where they could once again grow their own food and settle into a safe place. The story God wanted the Hebrews to tell when they came into the promised land was the story of God saving them. God was with them when they weren't anything special, when they were immigrants, when they were forced into slavery, and when they cried out to God, it was God who saved them from their slavery. Jewish people have been celebrating this festival of their first harvest for 4,000 years now. They follow the instructions that God gave through Moses to the Hebrew people. They bring the food and they tell the story every year of how God walked with them, heard them, and brought them out. At Christmas time, I know it's Lent, but at Christmas, Christmas time, we Christians tell a certain story too. When my daughter was four, we unboxed the figures for the Christmas nativity scene and set them up by the fireplace. Our fireplace has a raised hearth, so it's like a table in front of the fire. When we didn't have a fire in the wintertime, we lit candles to warm the darkness. Emma, my daughter, had been part of this ritual for only four years, but when I made her tiny puppets out of popsicle sticks and pictures of all the characters in the manger, she told me the story as only a four-year-old could tell it. And I could see by her face that she was so happy to tell that story in her simple way. It was her story, too. But then she asked for some crackers. I thought she was hungry, so I brought them out and laid them on the hearth. And she pointed to the three candles that were on the hearth and she said the first one was for God and the second one was for Jesus and the third one was for Jesus' mom. Then she broke her crackers and she put a piece in front of each candle and then she gave each of us a piece. Maybe it's because I'm a minister but that sure felt like communion to me. How does a four-year-old know what communion is when she hasn't been taught about it? Maybe because we started letting her have communion and worship when she first started being curious about it. Through her experience of this ritual, once a month, she figured something out. She certainly couldn't tell me that communion was remembering Jesus' life, death, and resurrection and how he saved us. But she knew that the story and the actions were very important. As Christians, we have a central story about our faith. It is the resurrection story. God came to be with us on earth in the person of Jesus, and Jesus taught us about how loving God is and how close God wants to be to us. And Jesus died and came back to life and showed us that death is not the final story. We know that story very well. But what is our story? How has God come into our lives, taught us, gone through hell with us, and brought us out on the other side? 
How does God show up in our story? Where were you born? What happened in your family when you were growing up? Who were your friends? What did you enjoy doing? Can you see God in these scenes from your childhood? God was the one who watched over us when we learned to walk, when we fell off our bicycle, on the first day of school, and when grandma died. As a teenager, who did you love? What did you fight for? How were you disappointed? Who stood by you? Where was God in these tumultuous years? God stood by us when we tried something new, when we rebelled against our parents, on our first date and when high school was just too much to bear. When you grew up, what work did you want to do? What obstacles have you run into? With whom do you belong? How do you love others and give to the world? God is behind the scenes when our work is satisfying and when we lose our job, when we are in love and when we fight with our partner, when we are happy to spend our time and our money, our passion on our children, a good cause or a work of art, and when we lose a dream, our health or a loved one. In your older years, what are you proud of? What do you regret? Who is your family now? What do you want to be remembered for? Is God in this time too? God comes closer when we let go of our career, when we gain time for a longed for dream, when we are limited by our bodies, and when we see the end in sight. Today's scripture reminds us how important it is to open our eyes and see God in our story. When we take time to see, we learn more about who God really is for us and for the world. We learn about who we are and what life is really about. We each have our own Exodus story, the story of God freeing us from a dark place and leading us to a better place. We each have a resurrection story, the story of God bringing life out of death. Our story changes us and helps us carry on. There are also times when someone else needs to hear our story because they are stuck or grieving, discouraged, or afraid. A friend or colleague or our child may need to know that God is walking with them too. Laura, the storyteller, learned her craft from her grandmother, Dina. Dina grew up in Russia in a Jewish ghetto. The only way out of poverty for a girl in that time was through an arranged marriage to an American Jew. When Dina was just 17, she left the old country and moved to America to marry a virtual stranger. But Dina lived to be 105 and had a rich life, not in money, but in experiences and relationships. God was with her in her travel across the ocean, through the challenges of marriage and raising children, through the joys of grandchildren and family gatherings. God was with her through loss and death. God had brought Dina out of the bondage of poverty in the old country to a new life in the United States. Her grandchild, Laura, grew up hearing Dina's Exodus story and continues to carry that story inside her. Knowing her grandmother's story changed Laura for the better. It gave her courage, hope, humor, and a way to tell her own stories.
What is your Exodus story? What is your resurrection story? How has God been with you through the events and people in your life? God did not need to hear the story of the Exodus from the Hebrew people, but those long ago immigrants needed to tell their story. They needed to tell their story as a way to remember how God was with them and to teach their children and their children's children about trusting and hoping and growing in God. We need to tell our Exodus story or our resurrection story for the same reasons. Our story can give us and those around us a reason to trust in life, to hope for the future, and to open up to growing in God. As the old hymn, I Love to Tell the Story, says, I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. Go and tell your story of Jesus and his love for you. Amen.